Hello everyone, this is Sterling Levine, and I will be working with Derek Mills for our last project. We will be creating a mobile roguelike game deployed to iOS devices, or well, we might end up presenting on an Android device again, but we'll see. Um, so how I'd imagine I would build a roguelike, which I never have, and I've always been interested in the concept, and since uh, we're up to building a 2D game for our last project, I was pretty excited at the prospect of making a pretty interesting take on the genre. So as I've labeled right here, player's going to be in yellow right here, just for me showing uh, my talking points. But anyways, so we would love to make a room-by-room -room procedurally generated roguelike that you know, has extremely simple elements like wall spikes, enemies that, you know, have different typings. So like, you know, certain enemies that just follow the player and blow up certain enemies that might lunge at the player, certain enemies that fire projectiles and like, and then different elements on the map that might kill you, like, you know, lava or, you know, just areas the player cannot go that will uh, kill you and destroy you and take away a life or reset the game. So these are basic roguelike elements, yeah? And I always thought, after hearing about other uh, AI-centered uh, games that can learn from the player's habits, is create a game that starts out extre extremely simple. And, you know, mind you, this would be an extremely simple prototype. But essentially create a game that saves into player prefs after every single room that the player goes into. It'll save that player's progress in such a way that it'll basically save what you had, uh, like what you did very well against. And depending on what you did very well against or your exploitable habits, the system will spawn the next room procedurally, you know, somewhat randomly. But it'll spawn it in a certain way that uh, will be a challenge for the player, hopefully, every time. So... I'll iterate this in an example. So you start out in a blank room. So you're going to go into the next room right here. And then say this room has uh, just a few really basic enemies in it. So player kills these enemies really, really easy. But he or she does so by hugging the walls. And then exits and goes to the next room. Alrighty, so now the system is going to know that. It's going to know that, alright, so our player hit these invisible walls next to the real walls, and we save that, and that's how they beat that level. So what are we going to do about this next room when it is built? So we're going to add now some spikes, just, you know, random spikes at first, to sort of lean the player to, alright, now it's time to do something different. So if they still perform extremely well, like, for example, well, we might have a timer, which would be, I guess, now that I think about a pretty good idea. So like a random, you know, you know, a standard clear for a room, say it's 15 seconds. And then, you know, the next one would be, uh, I'd suppose we could make a 12 second threshold. And then the, um, you know, say the next one is um, like a really, really awesome eight second threshold. So... You know, and we can kind of use, you know, these these really light gauges right here. So say if they clear the room in eight seconds, then obviously that wasn't that much of a challenge of them. So say player clears this room, goes on to the next room. The wall spikes obviously didn't do much, or maybe they still went close to the wall and just dodged the spikes. So now this next room is going to be completely obnoxious with the spikes, yeah? And just fill the room with spikes, like on the sides. So now the player is forced to manipulate in a different game area and combine with other enemy types that might be in there, depending on how well he or she's been doing against those certain enemies, that will also make the game a bit different. Now, I do want to make it so, like, say after a while, so our player after a while has dodged the walls, right, and stayed very far away from the walls and isn't doing so well all of a sudden. So after maybe one or two rooms, the walls are going to start to dissipate again and then start to go away. I mean, the spikes on the walls will start to dissipate and go away. So the game will kind of have this, like, give-and-take nature. So if you do extremely well, uh, you know, exploiting or extremely well um, with certain elements, it's going to make those elements harder. And if you start to tone down, like, say you start to take 15 full seconds or even longer per room, then the game knows, all right, though the player's having a bit of a hard time now, let's calm it down. And um, this is kind of a form of dynamic difficulty. And I've always thought dynamic difficulty in games is pretty interesting. You know, like, it's sort of like a one-size-fits-all t-shirt. And albeit those are great for, again, the majority, but they're not great for everyone. 
Uh, it's never truly, you know, one size fits all. But I thought like a system like this would be pretty cool and a pretty neat uh, design challenge on our part. Plus, I've never built a roguelike, uh, which is surprising considering like my portfolio is full of 2D games, but I've never actually gone in this dimension before, and it, with a roguelike. Um, Anyways, we hope to have a very working prototype for our final project with this. Uh, thank you for watching.